post from earlier requesting that his fans apply to be his children had suddenly aged incredibly poorly to the extent that he didn't even try to issue any kind of apology and instead to Cheers guys, it's your boy Blasphemous HD, and today we're here to check out the life of YouTube's most cancelled creator. And I know what a lot of you guys are probably saying, so what, EDP445 is making a comeback? And the answer to that is both yes and yes, because he's in this video too. But the first video we're going to watch, I don't think it's about EDP445, but the second one I'm pretty sure is. Let's do this. Jakishi was on track to become the next big Minecraft YouTuber until he was cancelled over 40 times in less than seven days. What? Who was Jakishi? What did he do? And how has his life been impacted as a result of these actions? Let's begin by looking at an early video posted to his Twitter, during which Jakishi would give a quick overview of who he was. Hello, my name is Jakishi Demetrius. I'm a 22 year old Minecraft and just chatting streamer, and I've been streaming for like seven years. My favorite part about streaming is the fact that I get to meet awesome people and make amazing friends. There were definitely some elements of weird in this introductory video, such as him calling himself a cat boy. It's time for my lore. I'm a cat boy. While showing his cat ear collection before stating this. That was I, weird. I can meow if you want. But for the most part, this video was fairly innocent, with his solid reputation being summarized by the countless positive replies. In other Twitter threads, Jakeshi was described as not only one of the best people I know, but also one of the best and most hardworking CCs I know, helping Jakeshi to get noticed by Dream, who randomly raided Jakeshi's Twitch channel. Wait, what? 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 Huh? Hello? What? There's no way. Wait. Yo, what the what? Welcome, everybody. What the? Hello, and welcome to the stream, everybody. What? I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> thank you guys so much. You love my nails. Thank you. Thank you for all the gifted. Thank, oh, the... thank you for oh. all the biddies. The follows yeah. Dream. Yes, actually Dream. Before Dream would double down on the kind gesture by donating $2,000 to him. Dream, there's no freaking way. A $2,000 donate. Dream. <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> Thank you so much. Boy. According to a former friend by the name of Pocket, Jakishi was an extremely hard worker and therefore deserved the recognition. Jakishi was somebody who always worked hard, you know? He never gave up. He kept things pushing when his support wasn't there. And this is just well-deserved, man. I'm just super happy for you. So congratulations, Jakishi. And to the credit of Jakishi, he was extremely grateful for the shout out. Posting on Twitter, invest in Jakishi stonks right now. Thank you, dream was taken. You and your community are amazing. Which received replies of further praise such as you deserve it you seem so chill after being raided by dream jakishi's twitch viewership exploded jakishi was getting like 30 to 60 viewers per stream this is game changing now he's getting a couple hundred while almost every single tweet he'd post began to receive between a hundred and a couple thousand likes and he's getting like thousands of likes per tweet now like one to two thousand which is insane bro like just overnight additionally his follower counts grew to 57,000 on twitch 27,000 on tiktok 7,000 on youtube and more than 10,000 on twitter with this growth being highlighted in a tweet reading i'm still so shocked that i went from like 1.5k ish to 11.5k ish in like four days you guys are bonkers which once again prompted reply after reply of people reiterating just how much he deserved the growth however jakishi's biggest success would come four months after these tweets when he'd announced on the 25th 4th of October 2021 that he'd been invited by Dream to join his SMP. What's this? I'm one of the newest members of Dream SMP. Can't wait to make new friends and great memories. The reason this post received over 26,000 likes and hundreds of positive comments was because being invited to the Dream SMP was like winning the lottery for Minecraft content creators. For example, Tommy Innit gained 8 million subscribers in the 12 months after he joined the Dream SMP, while almost every other member has an extremely recognizable name as a partial result of the server's influence. Therefore, being invited to the Dream SMP gave Jakeshi an extremely high probability that he was going to be one of the next big names amongst that group, with his Twitch gaining over 32,000 followers after announcing that he joined the server. Jakeshi instantly began to exhibit the same kind of outlook and attitude as these other Minecraft streamers, making a Twitter post only one day after being accepted into the SMP, reading, So I had something brought to my attention that one of my new mods said something that wasn't okay in any circumstance. They have been unmodded because that doesn't fly with me at all. That isn't the kind of stuff I want in my chat, not from mods, not from anyone. Love you guys. For people asking for context, there was something said about self-harm and it wasn't okay. With this post seemingly try to establish the idea that he was of good morals and could do nothing wrong, which also seemed to be the goal of his countless other tweets where he was trying to come off as extremely nice and overly accepting of others. However, you should always be cautious of a creator who seems too nice because 
everybody has an unseen dark side. Yep. And perhaps Jakeshi's overwhelming kindness was nothing more than a cover up for his own horrible past. I say be good to people, but don't be nice. Don't go that extra mile. And if you do, make sure it's for somebody who really, really deserves it. Don't just meet somebody, oh my God, I want them to really like me, so I'm gonna be really nice to them. That doesn't work that good usually. My experience with Jakeshi slash Demetrius popped up on the 26th of October, 2021, only two days after he was accepted into the Dream SMP. It had been posted by a user named Ren, who had attached a tweet longer, which read as follows. Due to the recent event of him joining a considerably large content creator group and gaining exponentially more exposure, I feel like it's my responsibility to bring this to light in order to prevent this person from taking advantage of more young girl. AKA, he's doing really good right now. Gotta take him down. The tweet longer then explained that the two had begun talking when she was 14, Jakeshi was 18 or 19, and that things had gotten heated in the chat pretty quickly. Oh. The two had joked about sending pictures to each other, which they would eventually do, and had also talked about meeting up, quote, If we would have met up that summer, I would have been 15 while he was 20, alone in a hotel with a man who said that he would try to not make sexual advances on me. What? The post concluded by stating, I can no longer ignore it, as his audience of young and impressionable girls. Yo, is it bad that I, I did not not know he was in the women i thought he was zesty he is even worse he's zesty for children but i thought he was just zesty i didn't know he liked women is growing by the second i blocked him on snapchat twitter and instagram several months ago after we eventually grew apart and have not spoken to him since i also know that i was not the only underage girl that he was sexual with ren had all of the screenshots to match and with the expose receiving over 50,000 likes it was only going to be so long until dream realized what was going on who would take to his private twitter in a post reading, remove Demetrius from the SMP for gross accusations that he also confirmed privately were accurate. No questions, no toleration. Disgusted and incredibly disappointed. We'll never let things like this stop me from trying to uplift members of the community and smaller content creators. It's part of what makes our community great. So stick together, be there for people who need it, and always be safe online. However, Jakeshi being removed from the Dream SMP was really only the beginning of his problems. Oh, On the original imagine. expose, a user by the name of Mackerel had replied by stating, my friend had a bad experience with him too, indicating that Jakeshi may have been a repeat offender. Well, over the next 24 hours, 18 different people came forward explaining that they had had a similar experience. Oh my God. We talked on Discord and it started out innocent until he suggested that we add each other on Snap. He'd bring up my age pretty often and always ask me if I'd never tell anyone because he doesn't want to get exposed like he is right now. Like this was his biggest fear. He brought it up so often that I don't know how I missed the fact that he had other victims. The funny thing is that after I turned 18, he never interacted with me in a sexual way again. I was a young minor, 12 to 14, not saying specific age. I told him I wasn't comfortable with those jokes and how he needed to stop. He never stopped. He continued. I didn't want to completely cut connections with him because I trusted him. He was my best friend and I didn't want to lose the person I enjoyed talking to. We were 11. AKA, oh, I liked the fact that he would make those jokes at me. But I didn't like the fact that he would make those jokes at me. Ah, it's a female. You never know what it's thinking. <laughs> And slash 12, we lied about our age and said I was 13. We were on a Discord server with Jakeshi. We ended up DMing each other because of a mutual friend and became pretty good friends. No. At first he seemed nice and we had a pretty normal relationship. No. But about a month or so in, it became very weird. He would ask to call us constantly, even when I said no, and make NSFW jokes to us, even when we said we were uncomfortable. By the following day, the count of allegations had reached 30. And by the end of the week, approximately 41 people had come forward, all of which signed a very similar experience. Jakeshi's bizarre post from earlier requesting that his fans apply to be his children had suddenly aged incredibly poorly to the extent that he didn't even try to issue any kind of apology and instead simply disappeared from the internet. His Twitch channel was terminated for breaking terms of service while he deleted every single video from his YouTube channel. His TikTok was deleted, his Instagram was erased and even his merch store was taken down completely. The only piece of remaining Jakeshi social media is his Twitch Twitter, which sits vacant following his final tweet of nothing more than the word Minecraft with a smiley face. So where is he now? Jakeshi was smart enough to never give out his surname, possibly because he knew he might end up in this situation. And as a result, there's very little info on what ended up happening to him. There are Reddit threads such as this one questioning whatever happened to Jakeshi after the drama. Although besides from some people hoping that he ended up in prison, the only information we have is for all we know, he disappeared. 
type of shit. I didn't see that coming at all. I really, 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 really didn't see that coming. It makes perfect sense that the other guy turned out to be a, a underage fanny bandit. Uh, EDP 445. Apparently he's in some new drama. Let's do this. So EDP is back. Or I guess I shouldn't really say he's back because he's still been lurking around in the shadows of TikTok for I would say around a year now. They seem to be the only major platform that won't just absolutely delete him into oblivion. And I believe at this point he's actually amassed around a million followers over there. Recently he's been telling people that he has some sort of like stage 5 kidney failure. And he's pretty much acting like he's Queen Latifah in that one movie where she only had like a couple weeks to live. And now he's gonna be campaigning to his followers with this video, help EDP get to Super Bowl 57. As I'm sure most of you guys know, EDP's favorite team, the Philadelphia Eagles, are gonna be playing in this Super Bowl against Mahomes and the Chiefs. And so this guy wants to be there to see it in person, like he was last time when they won in 2018 and he actually had a couple viral moments back then. But it's safe to say, my guy, that over the past five years, your public perception has really changed. In fact, he's lucky that he isn't locked up behind bars. All right, man, so the Eagles are going to Super Bowl 57, as you guys already know, to take on that big bitch, that barbecue-eating mother Andy Reid. That's big on big crime. And that punk-ass mother has single-handedly ruined my childhood, destroyed my shit. Um, from <laughs> 2012, sitting back and teasing us, never getting the fucking job done, and then you motherfucking fans have the audacity to sit back and kiss his fucking ass when he... I mean, he is one of the greatest coaches of all time. I think when a coach can lead his team to multiple NFC championships and even a Super Bowl, it's safe to say that it might not have been his fault that they didn't get over the hump. But uh, check it out, though, man. I decided to um, post and make a GoFundMe um, get EDP 445 to Super Bowl 57, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, you motherfuckers control, talk shit, which I already know you guys are going to. I couldn't be bothered to give a f Well, yeah, that's why we're here today. And, you know, we're not here to troll. We're not here to talk crap. We're here to just really be honest about the situation that a guy like you who was out there looking for a cupcake does not deserve to be going to these type of events. I don't watch them fucking whack ass, sad, terrible, no talent having mother. <laughs> any goddamn way you know what i mean and this guy loves to say that now over and over again that like uh he's never seen a single video made about him and i'm led to believe the exact opposite because over time he has referenced these different videos that people have made time and time again you know i was willing to bone a child sell my left ass cheek and my left Titty to go to that much. You might be able to get enough money to go to Super Bowl. You sell that much titty meat. These dudes got bigger breasts than half the females that I'm trying to get to take their pants off. It's wild in these streets. Whew. I mean, he's not lying. I think the tickets are about, you know, with fees and everything, I don't know, six to 7,000 per person. What? And that's not even factoring in the flight. That's not factoring in the hotel. What? Which are all gonna be greatly increased due to the high demand. And so if you want to go and see this Super Bowl at all, like let's say you want to go with one other person, you are looking to spend about, I don't know, $10,000 each for three hours of entertainment where your team might lose. You know, it's pretty sad it gets to that point because a lot of the real diehard fans, not like EDP, I mean like actually good people, aren't able to go see their team when it really counts. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to donate to the GoFundMe, link to the GoFundMe is in my bio. Um, I was gonna say up in the description box, but this ain't on YouTube. But yeah, link to the GoFundMe is in the bio. Or um, if you guys want to order shoutouts, <laughs> ep445.com, book your shoutouts. You know what I mean? Uh, and so yeah, almost like two years after he got caught, and he was initially gonna launch uh, edp445.com. It's finally up, you know, two years later when absolutely no one wants a shout out from him. And the only reason he's having to use that avenue to do shout outs is because Cameo kicked him off a long time ago. For those of you guys that don't know, I'm pretty sure this guy was making most of his money at one time on Cameo just doing little like, oh, happy birthday. And probably just saying a bunch of disgusting stuff into his phone all day. Um, if I can get 500 people to buy shout outs. Not gonna happen. In my ticket to Super Bowl 50. <laughs> Um, there is no way there's 500 people out there on this earth 
whose brains are so smooth that they would want a shout out from this guy. Getting a shout out from a famous pedophile, man. That's not good. It's like starting a race running backwards. No. If anything, I would think that most people that go on there and spend the money to try and get him to say something are just trolling. Again, I have over 1 million followers here on TikTok. Um, the only thing I'm asking for is for 500 people to go to five.com, book their shout outs, um, order their shout outs, and that's the ticket. So, yeah, it's not going to happen, buddy. And here is the actual GoFundMe. He says, what's cracking? It's your boy EDP. These past five months have been a complete nightmare. I'm sure by now most of you have heard that I've been diagnosed with a life-threatening disease. Yeah, honestly, keep it real with you, bro. Ain't nobody gonna give a shit when you pass. Ain't nobody gonna care, bro. Stage five kidney disease slash kidney failure. Talk about a devastating blow and a major turn of events for the worst. He also goes on to say that through this bad news, the one thing that kept him happy was the Philadelphia Eagles, who have had a great season. They went 16-1 and during the regular season, and they managed to top Daniel Jones and Josh Johnson to go to the Super Bowl. I mean, talk about a cakewalk. And so, yeah, so far this campaign has been going for around a week. This guy is at $757. How the hell did he do? I bet, bro... I feel like the only people who are donating to him are other pedophiles. Woo! Go on, brother! Yeah! Craigslist teens. Craigslist teens. Like, that's what they be chanting. Probably say Craigslist kids, because I don't know if he likes women as old as teens. I don't... Of his $6,000 goal, someone actually donated $350, which to me is just like, why? And these are actually the things you can buy on his website. You can book a one hour interview with him for 150 bucks. It was formerly uh, 500 it looks like, but he's definitely lowered that price. It's on sale right now. And just a word of warning for those of you that want to do that. I'm pretty sure the last guy that tried, his name was like That's Gas Dom. Got his channel absolutely nuked after working with EDP445. He's selling a plunger. He's selling a Super Bowl live stream so you can pay $30 to watch the Super Bowl with him. And like I said, he has the video shout out for 40 bucks. I think it's safe to say at this point, guys, that EDP is definitely on his last leg. I mean, I would say for this specific Super Bowl, I'm pretty much impartial. I mean, obviously with me being a Cowboys fan, I don't like the Eagles. But at the same time, I don't really like when one team seems to get every single call. And the Chiefs at this point pretty much play daddy ball with the refs. But y'all let me know what you guys think about this down below. Does EDP deserve to go to the Super Bowl? Like I said, I think he should just feel lucky that he's not behind bars right now. Either way, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. Dropping a like and subscribing. But as you guys know, it's been your boy the Tan Superman. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace. Well, that was two of the internet's most canceled creators. I feel like he is way more canceled than the other guy. But the only difference is EDP 445. He don't care. He just keep going. Crazy stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Twisms.